Hello, and welcome to my podcast, Empowered to Thrive. I'm your host, Kareen Powell, and I'm the owner of Change Radically. In this space, we'll talk all things inner wellness, and parenting will certainly come up too. Because I'm a mom to four kids, so parenting is a huge part of my life. This space is designed for safety. Your inner child is welcome. Your past self is invited to listen as well. And no matter what type of day you're having, I want you to know I'm glad to be with you. I live out of vulnerability and transparency. So come and be. Be yourself. Be messy. Invite a friend and please stay a while. Keep coming back. I want you around. Now, let's jump into today's episode. I'm so excited to have Isolin with me today. Isolin Rosier comes all the way from France and shares with us her insights and her knowledge around time and how you can turn time into an asset in your life. We are going to talk about boundaries and you know, you hear me talk about how important it is to have boundaries in our life. We're also going to talk about how you can create the life you desire, which is another thing I am a big proponent of. So I hope that you will stay around and enjoy this conversation that Isolin and I have together. I'd like to share with you a little bit about our guest. Isolin is a time management coach. She helps female overachievers have a thriving business without compromising their personal lives. How important that is. And she teaches them how to turn time into their biggest asset. So let's dive right into this conversation. There's so much you're going to gain from it. Zalyn, thank you for being here today with us. Hello. So thanks, first of all, for having me. And yes, time is one of the most valuable assets that you can have for your business and your life. And unfortunately, most of the people are not using their time. And they are not even aware that time could be one of the most valuable assets of their business. So from what I see, it's like uh, when it comes to people, there is five stages, what I've called of time. The first stage is really when you have like no, like no time consciousness. Like you, you are always running after time. You don't see time. Uh, You see time as your enemy. You don't really see time as something that you can use as that you can leverage for yourself, whether it's in your business or in your life. Then you have the stage of the awareness where you are starting to say, oh, like I don't use my time properly. Like I would love to, to know how to use, to use it in order to be more efficient in my work, in order to be more organized in my personal life. Then when you are aware the next stage is what I call is the time experimenter. You are at a stage where you actually understand that time can be really an asset for your business. So you are trying different things. You are trying different things, but unfortunately, none of the things are really working. You are still not able, you know, to use your time really well uh, in order to be more efficient in your business and more efficient in your personal life. Then the next stage, it's time optimizer. This is when you actually understand that time could be one of the biggest assets in your life and you start to actually do the right thing. So you start being more efficient at work, you start to work less, you start to unplug like um, to unplug more in your personal life so you can, you can spend more time with your family, you can be more rested. And finally, the last stage is the time expert where you understand how to leverage time so you don't have to work thousands of hours a week. You can just work less than 25 hours a week, grow your business, and still have a family life. I still have a personal life where you are taking care of yourself. You can enjoy your life. You can do whatever you want. And actually, like, if you are listening to that and if you are actually feeling that one of these stages is one of them, this is really important. Because if you want to be able to actually change your relationship with time and to actually use it as an asset, you need to understand where you are in the in the time journey. Yeah. Knowing where you are to know what you need to do, what you need to focus on. Yeah, very important. 
Yeah, and, and actually that's something that is really important because that will help you understand where exactly you need to go. So I, I don't know, tell me one of the biggest issues that the woman in your audience is experiencing, like the biggest problems that they have. Mm. So I think not having enough time for themselves to relax, to recharge so that they can you know, function better when they're doing all the other things that take responsibility. Okay, so one thing that is causing that is that they, they never unplug. And um, okay. what I'm teaching, what I'm teaching my client is that when you are in a stage where you are all the time, you know, overworking all the time, like on, you know, your brain is always working. You are always thinking about all the thing. You are never really resting because even when you are in holiday, even when you are in weekend, you are always thinking in the back of your mind of work, of what you potentially like forgot to do, yeah. some things that you miss. And the fact is like being in that stage is actually draining you. This is making you more tired. And this is kind of like diminishing your productivity because the fact is that you need to rest. Your mind and your body needs to rest. So when you are never employing like this, this is actually taking a hit on your productivity, on your time management, on your life, on your focus, on everything. So one of the big things that you need to understand is like basically creating a protocol that is going to help you unplug. So what I mean by protocol is like, what time do you need uh, to actually uh, close your computer so you can start enjoying your personal life? Uh, when, uh, what do you need to do in order to switch your mind from work to, to actually like just having fun? Because sometimes even if we close our computer, like our mind is still thinking about work. So mm -hmm. what is the one activity that you can do that is going to represent in your mind the transition between actually work and downtime. And that's something that is really important. You need to build a routine that is working for you, that is going to help you unplug. Because the truth is, is that we cannot go from like being working on our business one second and the other second, like just having fun. Like our brain needs to get used to it. You need to train your brain to do this deconnection. And one thing that I notice in a lot of my clients is that they think they're unplugging, but they are not, which means that I call that intermittent unplugging because they, are, they, try to, uh, they try to unplug. They might unplug for a few minutes, but then they go back to think about work. It's kind of like they are not really making like a disconnection between their work and actually their personal life. And you want to have this real true disconnection so your brain can rest so your body can rest and actually one thing that also you need to understand is that when you are unplugging when you are resting you are becoming more efficient rest is really part of your productivity mm -hmm. and and some things that i'm always saying is that you need to split your time into three things the doing time which most of us do all the time, we are doing, doing, doing. The thinking time that we tend to actually like, kind of like downsize, you know, like we're doing thinking time, but we're not really consider considering it as a work. Why thinking time is like 50% of your business, to be honest, and then downtime. So you need to look at your calendar and say, okay, do I have this free time? Because most of the time, your downtime is not really your downtime and your thinking time is not considered as your doing time. So you really need to actually like have clear boundary in between so you can make this really, real big disconnection and really be productive. Mm -hmm. That's good. What you're talking about is point on, right? That idea that we're not really unplugging or we're doing it for a few minutes, which is not enough. And also like knowing if you're spending time thinking, I, I guess 
I'm just recapping what you're saying and just hearing like we have to reconceptualize this idea that that's actually productive. The thinking time has to count as the work time, right? And yeah, also exactly. that the rest time is productive and necessary. And that the break between it all needs to be noticeable and distinct, right? Is that is that what I'm hearing? Yes, exactly. Is which means that, like, a, a time that you have, like, let's say, doing time and downtime can be like just doing time and downtime. Like each of them is really different. So you really, you really need to have all of this because what I noticed most of the time is like some of the women are going to say, oh, I'm taking downtime. Okay, but what do you do during your downtime? Oh, I'm watching, I'm reading something about my business in my bath. Okay, yeah. great. But that's not, that's not downtime. Like, don't do that. Like, downtime is just like taking a book, reading it, and just having fun reading it. This, this is nothing related about work. Yeah. And I know that a lot of people want to, you know, to uh, optimize their time, increase their productivity. But this kind of behavior are not really helping you. You think that you're productive, but what you do is counterproductive actually because like you need to actually get really compartmentalize uh, everything so it's really clear for your mind and it's really clear also for the people around you because sometimes you know it's really hard for family to say okay are you working are you relaxing what are you doing mm -hmm. because even like sometimes you are next to them and you have your baby playing, but you're on your phone trying to answer email. What is that? Is that working time or is or is that downtime? Like, I, I don't know. You really need to be clear and to have like really good boundaries in between. So which means are, is for the three, uh, the three time, just be clear, what does that mean for you? Like, is actually downtime being just taking a bath or listening to music or maybe I don't know playing some games on your phone whatever it is right. maybe actually working and we're doing time is just checking your email but it's not in your email why having your baby next to next to you trying to feel like you are there without being there because like that's the, the biggest thing that I notice is like a lot of people are not present yeah. You are not present with your family. Yes. And you want to be present for your family. And the only way for you to be present in your family is to actually know that everything is your business is going well. Mm -hmm. That everything is covered. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, when you don't have this, this thinking about like, I got everything covered, you, your mind starts spinning. And this is how when you are actually disconnecting with everyone around you because you are always like, you know, in your mind trying to solve everything. Yeah. And it's true. I found that I've noticed on my days to be in my office, I can't jump right into work. I have to do something that's light and fun or get a task done around the house because I'm not ready mentally. I'm not prepared because I haven't had actually rest time or time to catch up on all the other things. And so I realized I got to do that. And then I can actually dive into work and enjoy it and get things done. And that's what I hear. I mean, that's what I'm pulling from what you're saying. So this week, we actually planned in yesterday for me to be able to like do other things like the to-do list in the house or go out by myself if, if I could find, you know, could make the time for that so that I can be more productive today because otherwise I just, I just don't feel like I can. I don't come with the energy to jump into the work. So here, what I hear is like, there is, there is two things. For instance, I'm in the same position as you. My baby is here. And actually this week, my father is here. So like I have him and her to take care of. So basically what I'm doing is that I'm, we are planning one activity with baby every day. So this is planned on the morning when she's fresh, when she's like, you know, in the, in the best state that she can. And usually on the afternoon where she's napping, I'm working, I'm doing the work. Mm -hmm. 
So basically I'm working pretty much between like, let's say three to four hours a day. And I organize my day around that. So on the morning, we're taking breakfast, we're going out doing the activity, whether it's the park, the aquarium, like the zoo, whatever it is. Then I'm I'm coming home, I'm I'm doing I'm taking the lunch with my father, we're speaking about things, then chilling up, I'm working, and when I'm done working, then I'm getting back to being with them. And the truth is like this schedule might be really hard for a lot of people because you need kind of like switch from one thing to another. But my mind is really clear. So which means that I know exactly when I need to, to start working. I know exactly when I need to stop. And on the next day, I know exactly when I what I need to do. If I have client calls, if I have uh, like uh, any other uh, type of pod- uh, podcast interview, whatever. Mm-hmm. Everything is actually planned. So during these like three to four hours that I'm working, like I'm the best, if uh, my efficiency is at the top. I know exactly what I need to do. I know my task. I know pretty much how long, how, what is going to take me. And I'm just doing it. Yes. Yes. But you need to have this clarity and you need to plan ahead. That's one of the big things. Yes. Yes. Because when when you don't plan ahead, when you are not, you know, if I w- had planned my w- my week would have been completely different if my dad would have not been there. I also like he's not coming often, so I need to be present with him. So I need to spend more time. So I'm working less than usual. But you always need to actually take into account everything that is going to happen and have clear boundaries, which means that when it, like it like it's three or four hours, no more. Then I close my computer. I'm doing my routine to unplug and then I'm fully present with them and I'm starting back on the next day. Yes, yes, yes. And it creates that feeling of relief too because I know for me, sometimes coming to my office, I leave my computer in my office so that when I'm going to work, I'm going to go to my office and I'm going to work. But I don't want to have to feel the, um, the pull when I'm in the house and something needs to get done. So it's it's there's a relief when you create your boundaries and you stick with them, like you were just saying. Yeah, it's because you are controlling your time. And that's one of the biggest thing and a lot of women are, contr- are actually struggling with is that you don't have the feeling that you are controlling your time. So by having a schedule, by knowing that your schedule is going to answer everything that you need to do, you will know that you are in control of your time. And when you are in control of your time, you are showing up in a way different, like really differently. Yeah. You are, you, you, feel, you feel better, you feel relaxed, you are more present with your kids, you are less tired because yeah. you know that everything is going to get done. Yeah. And one thing that I will say, because I know that there might be some overachiever listening to us and I know this is really complicated for overachiever, to do less, to stick, you know, to your schedule and not overwork because we always want somehow to do more, to get things done. But you need to understand that by doing less, by focusing on specific tasks, on your priorities, you will actually get more done in the bottom line. It's yeah. not because you think that you are doing more right now that you are go- actually going to do more because if, if the truth is like your business and your life is a marathon. Like it's not about like just a sprint for a week and then you are giving your all and then it's done. No, it's like you need to implement like the process. You need, you need to implement everything. So it's something that you are nailing a bit more every day. So you can feel the relief of knowing that every, everything will get done. Mm-hmm. So what do you say to the person who doesn't have the boundaries right now and doesn't have the good defined definition between work and rest and the transition? Where do they start? Where, where's one place they can start? Okay, there is two things. The first thing is that I, I would be clear on what, what do you want your life to be? How do you want to spend your time? Because the truth is like, If you want to work like three to four hours a day, you can do it. That's possible. 
but you need to actually be on board. You need to, to say, okay, this is what I want. I want to spend four hours a day on my business and the rest of the time, I want to spend it with my family or doing something else, like maybe if you are like doing yoga, whatever it is. You want to be clear on how you want to spend your time on a daily basis. And especially um, when it comes to the speed to your business and your personal life, but inside each of those categories, you want to be clear on how you want to spend your time. So which means that when it comes to business, do you want to mainly, I don't know, maybe you love reaching out to people. You love doing interviews, but you don't love to, I don't know, post on social media. So how can you organize your time so you are focusing on what you love to do and you are delegating everything else? when it comes to your personal life you want to do the same thing how do you want to spend your personal life you want to actually take care of yourself you want to be present with your kids you want maybe to have like some time alone with your partner whatever you want to make sure that you know how you want to break it down so that will be my first step when it comes to like get clear on your vision so you can actually take action to implement that vision the second thing will be actually to implement what I call your boundary protocol. So your boundary protocol is really about understanding what are the boundaries that you need to have and what is the boundaries that you are that you want to have. Because sometimes the boundaries that you need and the boundaries that you want are not the same thing. So think about exactly what are the boundaries that you want to implement in your life. So it may be like, I want to finish work at 2 p.m. every day. That's a boundary. I want uh, I want to actually spend one hour each week alone with one of my kids. And it will be from this hour to this hour. Like, just get clear on what are the boundaries that you want to implement. And once you have implemented them, you need to do the work of, like, what if someone is, like, not actually like being mindful about my boundaries how does that make me feel because most of the time when we have boundaries and some people are crossing it we feel kind of like triggered so you want to understand why this is triggering you and you want to be able to work on like what is what is going to be your answer your answer can be like some like specific action it can be like a like a discussion with someone telling them exactly how you feel and how you want it to go. Like there is a lot of things that you can do in order to be able to actually vocalize or make your boundary clear to the people around you. But you need to know exactly what are going to be your behavior. Because what is happening is most of the people, when their boundary are not respected, sometimes they are not saying anything about it or they just don't know how to have this tough discussion about like, this is my boundary and that's it. Like, I don't want you to cross it. And by understanding what is the boundary that you want, the ones that you need, how it's triggering you and what should be your answer if this happened, this will help you really own your boundary. And when you are owning your boundary, like if someone is crossing it, you are just saying, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is my boundary. So if you are not happy, just go. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I literally can feel the empowerment in what you're saying. Like you figure out what you want for your life. You create a plan with help and you take the action needed. But as you were speaking, it was almost like I heard you saying, you can have whatever life you want. And I just love the empowerment of that reality because I, I, I think it's easy to forget that that's possible and to just get stuck in what our life is or what our business is and think, no, like I, I can't, I, I can't get out of it. And what you were saying is just, oh, so freeing. Love it. Yeah, I mean, you can have the life that you want. You know, like uh, society tends to tell you, oh, you need to work nine to five. And that's how it is if you want to make money. Okay, 
great. But like, if it's not the life that you want, just don't do it. Like there is something that is completely possible. Today, I'm choosing to work like three to four hours this week because my father is there. Like maybe tomorrow, if I want to actually just work for three days, like seven hours each day and then do nothing on the rest of the week, I will do it. You need to understand what is good for you and what feels like, what actually help you enjoying your life. Because I see a lot of people working the entire life saying, oh, when I will retire, I will enjoy my life. But the fact is like some of them don't get to retirement. Some of them don't have enough money to enjoy uh, to enjoy life when they are retiring. Some of them get sick. Like don't wait. That is too late to actually want to enjoy your life. You you should have like proper time to work and proper time to enjoy your personal life. Mm-hmm. Because I see a lot of people saying, oh, I'm going to do these extra works today because uh, I will have time to do that later with my kids. But what if, what if there is no later? Mm-hmm. Time needs to be, to be enjoyed now. Yeah. And that's the biggest misconception of, of, of the word is like people say we have time. Yeah, we do. But what are you doing with your time? Because by saying you have time every day, you will fall short on time at some point. Right. So that's something that a lot of people need to be aware. Like time is something that you can learn, that you can improve. But you need to actually value it as the best asset of your life. Mm. Because if you prioritize work over your personal life, you will never leverage time to actually get the life that you want. Yeah. It's good. Really figuring out what they value and then doing something about it. I'm interrupting the episode just for a moment to let you know that I have some newly revised and fresh workbooks for you. They'll focus on healing your inner child, living intuitively. What are the keys for change? How can you stop people pleasing? If you've heard me talk about a subject here on the podcast, I likely have a workbook that also talks about that subject in more depth. So go and take a look changeradically.com slash shop. It's all on sale right now, 50% off. So go ahead and check it out today. Changeradically.com slash shop. Time is really like the best asset of your life and for your business. And you just need to be aware of it and to learn how to use it. Mm-hmm. because a lot of people think they cannot do it it's not something that you learn because this is not something that you can control because it's really intangible but honestly it's not if you can learn how to create your business why you cannot learn how to use your time in order to have a better life and, and more money yes yes one thing that i would say is that don't get overwhelmed with everything that i just said Mm. Just take one step at a time. Mm. So which is at first, try to take the five stage of time and say, okay, where am I right now? Once you are there, just ask yourself, okay, I'm there. This is what I want to improve. This is what I can improve. Then actually think about like, how do you want to spend your time? Yes. So you get to actually create an action plan to say, this is how I want to spend my time and this is how I want to improve. Maybe here I don't have enough downtime. Maybe here I'm having too much doing time. Just think about that. And then once you have done that, go into really like the the boundary protocol. Mm -hmm. There's something, what are the boundaries that you need to put in place in order for you to feel more in control of your time and that people are respecting you. So, because a lot of things, and one of the biggest thing about time is that you also need to implement. It's like everything. And I see a lot of people 
actually buy time management courses or things like this and not taking the time to implement it. Everything that you, you, when it comes to time and when it comes to everything, when you invest in something, just do it. So take every step that I just gave you, work on it, implement it and move forward. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just about knowing it, it's about also the application. You need right. to actually apply it so you can start to see the at the tangible result in your day-to-day -day life and you can also assess what is working what is not working because that's the basis of time a lot of people are implementing things but not assessing whether it's working or not and sometimes they keep doing stuff that are not working and they start to eliminating things that are working yeah. so you really want to every time that you are implementing this step actually assess Assess what is working and not, and just take the appropriate action to move forward. Okay. Yes. Very practical. And like you said, we have to do with what we hear. So thank you very much for sharing with us. And I, I'm even, I just feel like reignited um, and reminded again that like, you know what, your life and your business can be whatever you want it to be. And you have the power within you to create that. And do what you love, spend a lot of time doing what you love and delegate the things that you don't enjoy as much. So I know I pulled those things from what we talked about and I'm, I'm grateful for just that, you know, just that reignite for myself personally. So thank you. I'm super happy to share and I'm really glad that it was uh, actually it helped you. And I hope it's going to help a lot of women listening to us today because really, Time is an asset and you start seeing it. You should start seeing it as an asset for you. Yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure what you shared is going to be helpful. So thank you very much. If you enjoyed today's episode, I wanted to highlight a few others that I previously recorded that you may also find helpful. From season four, episode two, the B word boundaries. From season three, episode three, tools for effective communication. And from season two, episode 36, two four-letter words, must rest. Go ahead and take a listen to any of those, and they will expound on things we talked about in today's episode. Here we are. We've come to the end of another episode. Sit back and reflect on what you heard. What's the one thing that resonates with you that you can take away and do something with. Let's not just listen. Let's listen and take action. Now, action may look very different for us, but it's doing something with what we hear. I hope that you'll share today's episode with a friend that you think would also enjoy it. And please come back next week. I hope that you have a fabulous week and that you remember when you pillow your head at night, when you're going through your days, that who you are is good. And I'm glad that you're alive.